This video contains the solutions for numbers 22 through 27 in your practice AP Physics C test, practice test number 2. Number 22, um, what's the total kinetic energy of this two puck system before the collision? Well, let's see. Energy doesn't have any direction, so we just have to find this energy and add this energy. So it's 1 half uh, m v squared plus 1 half m v squared. Um, this, let's see, that's 4 times 1.5 uh, is 6. Half of that is 3 joules and half of it's 2 joules. So it looks like it's got 5 joules of total energy. Again, energy does not have a direction now or ever. Um, what is the magnitude of the total momentum of the two-puck system after the collision? Well, um, momentum's conserved, so that means the total momentum here will be the same as the total momentum afterwards. And um, momentum does have direction, because momentum is mass times velocity, and since velocity is a vector, so must momentum be a vector. Um, so let's see. The momentum of this, mass times velocity, is 3 kilogram meters per second, and the momentum here is 4. I'm going to put them like this because I'm doing vector addition. 4 kilogram meters per second. So total, we're going to add them, but it's a vector addition. It's not 7. It's a vector addition. This direction and this direction. That's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So 5 is the correct answer. Um, number 24. Position is given by this. They want acceleration, so let's see, velocity would be the derivative of that, 6t plus 1.5, and then acceleration would be just 6. Hey, that was fun. Um, number 25, as shown above, two students sit at opposite ends of a boat that is initially at rest. The student in the front throws a heavy ball, like a big medicine ball, to the student in the back. What's the motion of the boat at the time immediately after the boat's thrown, or the ball's thrown, sorry, and later after the ball's caught? Well, the one thing that we know here is that momentum has to be conserved. Momentum is always conserved regardless of the type of collision. And um, if the boat is initially at rest, its initial momentum is zero. So when she throws the ball backward, the ball has momentum in this direction, which means the boat must move forward um, so that those two momentums will still total zero, right? Because the momentum must be conserved, so the total momentum will still be zero. So the boat will move uh, forward, since that's the pointy part of the boat. So that gets rid of these two. Um, and then when he catches the ball, then the momentum of the ball is now zero, which means the momentum of the boat must also be zero, because momentum must be conserved. So um, after he catches it, we're back to like our initial state, although the ball has moved. Um, the momentum must return back to zero, so the boat does not move. That's a conservation of momentum problem there. All right, this looks like fun. Two blocks are joined by a light string that passes over the pulley shown above. And uh, it's got radius of r, momentum of inertia i. And they're reminding us here that these tensions are not equal, t1 and t2, right? This has momentum, this has some kind of mass. So uh, it's not negligible, and that means the tensions will be different. Um, the angular acceleration is alpha. Which of the following equations best describes the pulley's rotational motion during the, the time the blocks accelerate? Um, let's see. We, um, let's set up, looks like we've got lots of moments of inertia and torque, so let's try this. Net torque is equal to moment of inertia times angular acceleration. That's the rotational form of Newton's second law. What would the net torque be. Let's take this to be the positive direction. So the torque 
here would be um, T2R minus T1R. That's This torque is moving in this direction. This one is fighting in the other direction against it, but this one's winning, right? So T2R minus T1R would equal to that. And um, that's a, kind of looking for something else to do, but that's actually D, isn't it? So that's all they wanted us to do. They just factored the R out. Not too bad. Uh, 27, the graph above shows the force of gravity on a small mass as a function of its distance R from the center of the Earth of radius R uh, sub Earth. If the Earth is assumed to have a uniform density, the work done by the gravitational force when the small mass approaches the Earth from far away and is placed into a circular orbit of radius R2 is best represented by the area under the curve between. Okay, so this is force and distance. So the area under this curve would in fact be work, right? Now they want to know from where to where if we're going um, from far away and placed into a circular orbit of R2. So that's from far away, I think we're talking about from infinity, in an orbit of R2. So uh, that's just E, isn't it? So from far away, and it's placed into a circular orbit of radius R2. So. Uh, There you go. A um, couple other things to say about that. The, um, this is the gravitational force at the surface of the Earth. And notice here we get this linear relationship, this, this odd thing that happens when we get inside of the Earth. At the very, very center of the Earth, there's no force, no gravitational force, and that'll increase as we get to the surface. And then, as you get further away from the Earth, then it, it follows the uh, inverse square law. But here, if we're just going from um, far away to R2, I mean, I guess you just need to know that far away means infinity there, right? And here, okay.